Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now today, on the Ryan Awesome Show, I'll be talking about AEW Double or Nothing 2021 pay-per-view. And so yeah, man, overall with this show, man, this is a great Great, great, great show, man. You know, we had a lot of great matches on this show. You know, the having fans back, dude, at a full capacity, that was freaking great. You know, the crowd, man, the crowd made this, they made this the best pay-per-view, man, because of their reactions to all the matches and all that stuff. You know, and just like what I said, we had a lot of great matches on this show. If I had to choose, like, the match of the night, you know, honestly, I couldn't tell you, but... I, like, I do have two favorite matches on the show. It has to be that, you know, that Omega match, Omega, Cassidy, and Pac match, and the Stadium Stampede. I thought the Stadium Stampede was a great main event. And so, yeah, but, yeah, every, it just it felt like everything was good. Everything on the show was good, you know. And, yeah, man, it just, at the end, it just turned out to be a great show, dude. Like, it really did. And, you know, it's that first, that first pay-per-view with fans back. You know, in a long time, dude. Like they they had their pay per views in front of some fans, but tonight, man, their pay per view was in front of everybody, man. A full packed crowd, and so that was really great, really great to see. And a, a breath of fresh air, man. I said this on Friday, man. Having the fans back was a breath of fresh air, dude. And so yeah, man. That's this is the AEW. This is the AEW Double or Nothing review on the Ryan Awesome Show. And if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell to so be the first ones to know my next video will come out because I am here each and every single week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit the thumbs up. Turn on that bell for all notifications. So you'll be the first ones to know when my next video will come out. And so, yeah, so, yeah, first off, we started off the show with the pre-show or the buy-in, whatever you want to call it. And it was for the NWA Women's Championship. So, yeah, I did watch the pre-show because I wanted to see, you know, what what was going to happen. And so we got this women's match, you know, really good match. And it was Riho versus Serena Deeb, who is the NWA Women's Champion. And so, yeah, we had European uppercuts to Riho. And we had a knee strike to Deeb. We had a diving crossbody to D and she kicked out of the crossbody. And we had a dragon screw, a, a dragon screw to Rio. And then Deep, she had targeted Rio's leg at one point. And then Deep, she was acting heelish in this match. So I don't know if she's a heel or not, you know. Because at first you had Rio, she was she had extended her hand because she wanted to shake Serena Deep's hand. But Serena Deep had slapped her in the face. She had slapped her right in the face. And so that was a heel move. And so, yeah, so we had a, a neck breaker. We had a neck breaker to Rio on a rope. And then, yeah, we had a diving foot stomp to Deep. And then Rio, she started fighting back. She had a 619 on Deep. And Deep got kicked out of the move. We had a guillotine choke from Serena Deep. And so Rio, she had countered it. She had countered it into a Northern Light suplex, which was a nice spot. And then Deep, she had kicked out. And so, yeah, so Rio, she was going for a diving knee drop, but she missed the diving knee. And then Serena Deep had caught her with a dragon screw again. She loved that move, the dragon screw. And so we had a twisted neck breaker. We had a twisted neck breaker to Riho and she kicked out. And we had a power bomb to Riho and she kicked out. And so we had a snapdragon suplex to Serena Deep. And then Riho, she had a diving foot stomp on Serena Deep's back. And then we had a single leg Boston craft submission move to Riho. But Riho, she had grabbed the rope to break up the submission move. And so once again, Serena Deep, she went for the dragon screw again. She hit the dragon screw. And then Riho, she had rolled up Serena Deep and she kicked out. And then Deep, she had drove Rio's leg into the mat over and over and over again. Again, showing that heel, Tennessee. Tennessee. And so, yeah, so Serena Deep, she had locked in her submission move, the Serenity Lock to Rio to win a match. So Serena Deep wins the match and is still the NWA Women's Champion. So, yeah, this is a really competitive match. You know, they, they do have history with each other. And that the AEW Women's Tournament that they had a while back, you know, Rio had eliminated Serena Deep, so that's why she's acting that way. 
acting heelish in his match. And yeah, it was it was just a great match, you know. Great intensity from both of these ladies. And who's next? Who's next for Serena Deeb? I don't know. You know, the NWA Women's Championship, it don't get featured that much. But it needs to start being featured on the show. And so, yeah, that was it with the match. And so, yeah, right after that match, we had another match. So, we, so yeah, this is the, the main show. This is the main show. So, to kick off the main show, we have Brian Cage, the machine Brian Cage, representing Team Taz versus Hangman Adam Page. And so, yeah, so, yeah, I, I love the crowd reaction, man. For Hangman Adam Page, dude, the crowd reaction, dude, was was phenomenal, dude. They were chant, they was chanting this dude out of the building. They was cheering him out of the building. So, yeah, I absolutely love the crowd reaction for Page. And so, yeah, so Page, he had went right after Cage. And so we had a sliding clothesline to Cage. And we had a tope to a seat of the Cage. And then, yeah, Cage, he had caught Page off of a diving crossbody. You know, outside diving crossbody. And then Cage, he had powerbomb Page into the ring post. But yeah, we have a lot of Cages. Cages, Page, we have Christian Cage, we have Brian Cage, we have Ethan Page, and we have Hangman Adam Page. So we have a lot of Page and Cages. So yeah, we had a jumping knee strike to Adam Page. And we had a crucifix bomb to Cage and kicked out. And we had a top rope moonsault to Cage on the outside of the ring. So that was nice. And so we had a top rope hurricanrana to Cage, which was nice too. And he kicked out. And so yeah, we had a swing and neck breaker to Page. And Page had kicked out of that. And we had a superplex. We had a superplex on the stage to Page. And on the on the stage ramp, so that had to hurt. That had to freaking hurt. And so yeah, we had an avalanche for F five to Page, and he kicked out. So that was a nice move right there. And so Cage, he, you know, Cage, he tried to hit Adam Page with his finishing move, the buckshot lariat. So he tried to steal his finishing move, but Page, he had caught Cage and then hit him, you know, hit him with his with his submit with his finishing move, the F five. And so yeah, so Cage, he giving Brian Cage, Page giving Cage. A taste of his own medicine. And so, yeah, we had a German suplex to Page. And we had a beautiful, a beautiful spinning powerbomb to Page. And he kicked out. And then Team Taz, they had came out to try to interfere in a match. to try to help Brian Cage. It was it was Ricky Starks and Hook that came out. And so, yeah, Starks, he had the FTW championship. And so, yeah, he, he had slid the championship in the ring for Cage to use the, to, to use the belt against Page. And so, Cage, you know, he had threw the belt at Ricky Starks, like, like, hey, dude, I'm not about to use this belt. I don't need your help to beat this guy. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, so they were arguing. Uh, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage and Hook, they were arguing. Well, Cage, he was arguing with both of those guys. And so, yeah, so Cage, he had got caught. He had got caught with a buckshot lariat from Page to win the match. So, Hangman Adam Page wins the match. And right after the match, you had Cage. He was upset with Ricky Starks and Hook again. You know, he was shoving both of them. And that was it. So it looks like Brian Cage, he's done. He's done with Team Taz. Well, it looks like he's done with Team Taz. I don't know if I like that. I don't know. Because who's going to do the speaking for him? I don't like, I don't know. But yeah, so yeah. But overall, man, this was a great match. Great match. Great back and forth. And Adam Hangman Page, he got his win back. Because the last time they were in there in the ring together on Dynamite, you know, Brian Cage, he beat Adam Page. So, yeah, so so Page, he got his win back. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after that, we had another match, and it was for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. So this is our first championship match on the, on the, on the main show. And so, yeah, it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Versus the Young Bucks. That's Matt and Nick Jackson. Who are the AEW World Tag Team Champions. With Don Callis. The Invisible Hand. In their corner. And so yeah. So yeah. The crowd again. I love the crowd reaction. For John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. They came out to the ring. To Wild Thing. And you know. They were singing along to the theme song. So I love that. You know. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. They were going crazy. They were. You know. Eating it up. They were eating up the crowd reaction. So I absolutely love that. And so, yeah, you have Moxley and Kingston. They went right after the Bucks at the start of the bell. Well, the bell didn't even ring yet. The bell did not ring. So, yeah, so the Bucks, they made their entrance. They did the whole streamer entrance. And so the streamers were coming down. And so Eddie Kingston and John Moxley, they went right after the Bucks. And so the bell didn't even ring yet. The Bucks still had their jackets on. 
And so, yeah, they were fighting outside the ring and all that stuff. We had Eddie Kingston here, the Tope Suicida, to the Bucks. And then, you know, they were fighting outside the ring. The brawl was breaking out in, into, from outside the ring, and they went into the crowd. And then Moxley, he had dra grabbed somebody's drink. I think it was a beer or something like that. He had drunk the beer, drunk somebody's beer, and then he started spitting it out and everything. He started banging the, you know, banging a beer can in his head, you know, trying to beat, look like he was trying to beat a Sandman. And so, yeah, so, yeah, Moxley and Kingston, they had took out Brandon Cutler because Brandon Cutler, he tried to help out the Bucks by spraying the, that spray that he used. He sprayed that spray on the Bucks to try to, you know, try to help them out. And so, yeah, so Moxley and Kingston, they had took out Brandon Cutler. And so right after they took out Brandon Cutler, then the match, you know, the match had started. The Bucks had came back into the ring, and so the bell had rung. And so we had an STO to Nick from Kingston. And then Kingston... You know, Nick, he had poked Kingston right in his eyes. And so, yeah, so the Bucks, they had targeted Kingston's bad leg or the knee. And so, yeah, we had a, a cannonball dropkick combo to Kingston from the Bucks in a corner. And so, yeah, so Matt, you know, this is the funny, funniest part in the match, dude. We had Matt, he was pretend, he was making fun of the hot tags, the baby face hot tags and stuff like that. He was pretending as if he was a baby face trying to get the hot tag and all that stuff, and he was doing all these crazy moves and all that stuff. Yeah, it was funny, man. <laughs> and, yeah, so Moxley, you know, he got tired of it. He got tired of Matt and Nick, so he took out Matt. And so, yeah, we had an exploder suplex to Nick from Kingston, and we had a hot tag to Moxley. And so Moxley, he had a power driver to Nick and Matt. So, yeah, I, I love that move. The power driver, I love the move. It, it was a wicked one, too, man. The way that John Moxley hit it, it was nasty, man. And so, yeah, we had a bulldog choke to Matt from Mox. And so Nick Nick had stopped the move. You know, he stopped the submission move. And so right after that, you had Carl Anderson. He had came out from the from the back. He was on the stage. You know, he was distracting Kingston and Moxley. And so, yeah, so Gallows from the other side, he tried to take out Kingston. But Kingston, he had took out Gallows before he could take him out. And so right after that, you had Frankie Kazarian of SCU, or the former SCU. You know, he had took out Carl Anderson because, remember, he, Frankie Kazarian, he had said that he's going to take out every single member of the elite. And so he started with Carl Anderson. So, yeah, so Frankie Kazarian took out Carl Anderson. And then Matt, you know, so the referee is distracted by all of this stuff. And so Matt, he had sprayed Moxley with that spray bottle. And so, yeah, so, yeah, he sprayed him with the spray bottle and he hit Moxley with the spray bottle behind the referee back. And so Moxley, he was bleeding after that. And so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so so, yeah, Moxley, he had kicked out on the move, and so he, that's when he started bleeding. And so, yeah, we had a Meltzer driver. We had a Meltzer driver to Moxley on a stage ramp from the Bucks. And, yeah, we had a senton bomb. We had a senton bomb to Moxley from Nick Jackson while Moxley, he was draped on the rope. So that was a nice move. And so we had kicks to the Bucks. I mean, we had kicks to Moxley from the Bucks. And so, yeah, so... Yeah, this is another funny part of the sh <laughs> the funny part of the on the match right here. We had Matt, we had Matt and Nick. They were, you know, mimicking the Shield because John Moxley used to be a part of the Shield. They did the whole fist bump that the Shield did, and then they tried to do the triple power bomb. Yeah, Matt, he was imitating Roman Reigns and all that stuff. So I thought that was funny. And so yeah, so we had a so yeah, we had a lot of WWE references on this show, man. We did. So, yeah, we had a double German suplex to the Bucks from Moxley. And we had a hot tag to Kingston. And then, you know, Kingston, he had to take out the Bucks. And so the crowd was chanting Eddie. So we had an Eddie chant. So the crowd was invested in this match. And so, yeah, we had a big boot to Nick Jackson from Kingston. And so, yeah, so we had chops to Matt from Kingston. And we had a slice bread number two to Kingston from the Bucks. And then, you know, one of these guys, I think it was Nick, he went for a senton bomb, but Eddie Kingston had got the knees up. And we had a hot tag to Moxley. And Moxley, he tried to take out the Bucks, but the Bucks had caught him with a super kick. So he had a super kick party right there. And then Moxley, he had locked in a sleeper hole on Mac Jackson. And so, yeah, this was a nice spot in this match right here. We had a 450 splash from Matt. So it, it was a beautiful one, a beautiful 450 splash from, no, it was from Nick, I think. Yeah, it was from Nick. And and Moxley had kicked out. So yeah, so so yeah, Matt. So yeah, Matt. He still had the sleeper hold. He was still locked in the sleeper hold. And so Nick, he had hit a 450 splash on top of 
John Moxley. And so because uh, Matt, he had moved in a different position. So Nick could hit the 450 splash. So that was really nice. And so, yeah, so both of these teams, they were going back and forth. They try to hit each other's, you know, they try to hit each other with finishing moves, their tag team finishing moves. And so, yeah, Moxley, he had threw in one of the Bucks stolen shoes that they had stole last time. And so, yeah, so they tried to use the shoes, but the referee had took away the shoes. And so we had a doomsday device to Matt Jackson from Moxley. And then Nick, he had broke up the pin. So that would have been it right there. And so, yeah, we had a sharpshooter. We had a sharpshooter submission move to John Moxley from Nick. And, yeah, so both of these teams, they were going back and forth. And we had a paradigm shift to Moxley. No, no, a paradigm shift to Nick from Moxley. And then Matt, he had broke up the pin. And we had super kicks to Moxley. And we had a John Moxley, he tried to go for the paradigm shift. But the Bucks had caught him with a super kick party. And Moxley had kicked out at one, not two, one. And so, yeah, so we had super kicks to Kingston in the face. So they super kicked him in the face, and then they super kicked him in his bad knee. And so, yeah, so to end the match, we had the Bucks. They hit their finishing move, the BTE trigger, or one of their finishing moves, the BTE trigger to Moxley. They hit it the first time, Moxley was still up. And they hit it the second time, he was still up. And, and then they hit it for a third time and a fourth time, and that was it. So they hit him with the BTE trigger four times. So... The Bucks wins the match and are still the AEW World Tag Team Champions. So, yeah, this was a great match, dude. Really great match. Great back and forth with these teams. And with this match, dude, I was, you know, at first I was iffy about it. I was I was iffy about the decision. Like, I wanted, you know, I, I, like, at first I didn't know who to pick. At first I didn't know what to pick, and then I knew who to pick. I was going with Moxley and Kingston to win. And, you know, just based off the crowd reaction that they got tonight, I was going with Moxley and Kingston to win. But they went with the Bucks. So, yeah. So, so yeah. Who's next? Who's next for the Bucks, man? That's the question. Who's next for the Bucks? And, yeah, man. I don't know, man. But it would have been it would have been cool if it was Eddie Kingston and John Moxley would have won. I would have went with Kingston and Moxley to win. But, yeah, it seems like the Bucks, you know, they're not they're not dropping the titles yet. They are not dropping the titles yet. So, yeah, so who's next for the Bucks? I do not know. I do not know. That's the question I don't know. Maybe if I had to pick, maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't know who else. What tag team division is on fire? We we already had the Varsity Blondes. We had the, we had the SCU. Who else do we have? We could do Santana and Ortiz. We could do Santana and Ortiz. Not that they won the Stampede match. We could do that. You know, there are there are other babyface tag teams that they can go after. You know, the Jurassic Express, I would love to see them, but Jungle Boy, you know, going after Omega now. But I'm I'm gonna get into that later. So yeah, so yeah. So we have the Casino Battle Royale after that. So the Casino Battle Royale. So yeah, so so yeah, they have like five different groups. They have the clubs, the diamonds, the hearts, the spades. And you have one person coming out as the Joker. So in each group, you have five people coming out. And so one person only comes out to the Joker. And so the Joker is the last person that comes out. And so it's a mystery person. And so, yeah, so first off, man, I could not keep up with this match. I could not take any notes in this match whatsoever, dude. It was damn near impossible, dude, to take notes in this match. But I tried to get as many notes as I could in this match. The match, dude, the match was all over the place, dude. It was all over the place. It was hard for me to do that. And so, yeah, so first off, we started off with the clubs. So the clubs, it was Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Will Hobbs representing Team Taz, Dustin Rose representing the Nightmare Family, and Max Caster representing the Acclaim. And so, yeah, so Caster, man, Caster, man, he should have survived longer in this match, dude. Caster, man, I... The crowd reaction, I love the crowd reaction when Caster had came out. When his music hit, the crowd went crazy, dude, when Caster came out. And so, yeah, so Caster, he came out rapping about all these guys except for Will Hobbs. And so, yeah, so first, the funniest thing he told he told Christian, he said the only reason why you were famous because, was because you had an, another Edge or something like that. Or something like that. He said he mentioned Edge. And so the crowd went crazy. They're like, oh. And so, yeah. So yeah, Caster man, I I love Max Caster man. They the acclaim they are a great tag team dude. They are a great tag team. They are freaking charismatic. And so yeah, so I wish I wish he would have survived longer in this match, but he got eliminated, dude. And so yeah, so we had 
you know, Sadell and Caster, they were going back and forth. You know, yeah, they were going back and forth. So Sadell, he started kicking Caster over and over and over again. And so Sadell, he ended up getting eliminated by Caster. So Sadell is the first person to eliminate it. So yeah, so Sadell, he actually tried to redeem himself because the last time he was in a double or nothing, I think it was last year, he had slipped. He had botched, botched his own finishing move. So yeah, he he actually redeemed himself this this year. So yeah, so we had Chops to Caster from Cage. So they were both going back and forth. And so Caster got eliminated by Christian Cage. So the so right after Caster got eliminated, dude, the crowd booed. The crowd booed. They did not like that. I did I didn't like that either, man. Caster should have stayed stayed in that match longer, man. Anthony Bowens, he should have he should have stayed until Anthony Bowens got in there. But yeah, the crowd had booed. The crowd had absolutely booed. They did not like that at all. And so yeah, right after that we had the diamonds. So the next entrant came out the diamonds. It was Matt Hardy, big money Matt Hardy, Isaiah Cassidy, number ten representing the Dark Order, Nick Camarado representing the Factory, and Serpentico representing Chaos Project. And so yeah, so when Serpentico came out, you know each of these guys they came out to their theme music. So yeah, so when Serpentico had came out, you had Luther, you know he had threw he had threw his tag team partner Luther he had threw. Serpentico in the ring. He grabbed him by his mask, and he, so he started throwing him into the ring. And so, yeah, so when Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy came out to the ring, they were blocking the, the entranceway because they knew that number 10 was going to come out because, you know, the Hardy family office and the Dark Order have beef with each other. And so, yeah, so the Hardy family office, they tried to take out number 10, but 10 ended up, you know, ended up taking out Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy. And so, yeah, so, so yeah, Serpentico, he got eliminated. He got eliminated by number 10. And then we had a spear. We had a spear to number 10 from Nick Camarado. So first off, we had number 10. He had a wicked, a nice looking spine buster to Camarado. And then Camarado had caught him with a freaking wicked spear. He he freaking tore this dude in half with that spear. And so, yeah, so we had Dustin Rhodes. He eliminated Camarado and number 10 at the same time. And so Nick Camarado, he was being a sore loser. And so he got a bull rope. Or uh, a cowbell and whack Cody, not Cody Rhodes. He whacked Dustin Rhodes in the head with it. And so yeah, so uh, Will Hobbs he had eliminated Dustin Rhodes. So Dustin Rhodes is out. And then Will Hobbs that got caught with a kill switch by Christian Cage. And then you know Hobbs wasn't eliminated. The commentary team thought that he did get eliminated, but he didn't. You know they couldn't keep up with it. So yeah, so Hobbs he was actually outside of the ring. And so yeah, right after that we had the Hearts. So we had the Varsity Blondes, that's Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Colt Cabana representing the Dark Order. Anthony Bowens, the other half of the Acclaim. And Pentagon representing the Death Triangle and the Lucha Bros. So yeah, so so Phoenix, I think Phoenix was actually supposed to be in this match. I think Phoenix was actually supposed to be in this match, but he got hurt. There were, there were a lot of people that were supposed to be in this match. I think QT Marshall was supposed to be in this match, but he got hurt. A wrist injury. And who else? I think they say Phoenix. I think Phoenix was supposed to be in this match too. Like I don't, I don't know. But yeah. So yeah. So you know everybody was going after each other, hitting each other with their signature moves. And so Isaiah Cassidy he had eliminated Colt Cabana, and then Bowens got eliminated, and then Griff Garrison got eliminated by Matt Hardy. And so right after that we had the Spades. We had Jungle Boy came out first. The crowd started singing to his theme music, Tarzan Boy. I loved it, man. And I was like, man, when crowd, when a when the fans come back, they are gonna sing his theme song, and they did that, man. So yeah, the crowd was singing along to Jungle Boy's theme music, and we had Mark Quinn representing the Hardy Family Office, and we had Aaron Solo representing the Factory, and we had Evil Uno representing the Dark Order, and we had Lee Johnson representing the Nightmare Family. And so yeah, so Pillman Jr. got eliminated by I forgot who it was. I think he got eliminated by Private Party. And we had Solo and Johnson. They got eliminated by, I think it was Matt Hardy. And so, yeah, so, no, I think Solo got eliminated by Johnson, I think it was. And then Matt Hardy eliminated Johnson. And so, yeah, so Evo Uno, he got eliminated by Pentagon. And then Pentagon, he got, you know, Pentagon, he got eliminated by Jungle Boy. And then Hobbs, you know, Hobbs, he had finally came back to, into the ring. He recovered. And so, yeah, he had took out the Hardy family office, and then Hobbs had got eliminated by Christian Cage. And so, yeah, so, yeah, the Hardy family office, they took out Cage and Jungle Boy, so they triple-teamed him. 
And so, yeah, the final entrant, the Joker, came out Leo Rush. Leo Rush. So, Leo Rush, the, yeah, the former WWE star Leo Rush, he came into AEW, double or nothing, as the Joker. You know, the crowd was going crazy. And so, yeah, so Leo Rush, he came in, hit a poison runner to Mark Quinn. He had a Spanish fly to Cassidy, and he started using the speed against the Hardy family office, so that was nice to see. And so we had a stunner to Matt from Leo Rush. So he had like a, I think it was like a springboard stunner, like a bottom rope spring springboard stunner. And then so Matt Hardy, he eliminated Leo Rush. And at, at that point, everybody was like, they were booing, man. They were absolutely booing. And so, yeah, we had a side effect to Jungle Boy from Hardy. And so Private Party Day, they got eliminated by Christian Cage and Jungle Boy. And so, yeah, so the final three, we had the final three. We had Matt Hardy. Christian Cage and Jungle Boy. And so, yeah, so Matt Hardy, he tried to, you know, he tried to gain an alliance. He tried to, you know, he tried to get an alliance with Christian Cage because, you know, they have history. They have history with each other. They go way back. They go way back into their WWE days when they were feuding with, you know, it was J Matt and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys versus Edge and Christian. So they have history. So they go way back. But Christian, you know, he ended up turning on Matt Hardy. So KG eliminated Matt Hardy. And so, yeah, we had a flying European uppercut to Jungle Boy and an insecurity kick to Christian. And we had a reverse DDT to Jungle Boy from Christian. And then, yeah, both of these guys, they were fighting on a ring apron. And, you know, Jungle Boy, he was using his athleticism against Christian. So at one point, he was trying to, he, he tried to throw him into the ring post. But Jungle Boy, he had, you know, used his athleticism to avoid the elimination. And so, yeah, so... Yeah, they were both going back and forth trying to eliminate each other. And so Jungle Boy, he ended up eliminating Christian Cage. So Jungle Boy wins the match. Oh, yeah, and the winner of the match would, got a, would, would have gotten the AEW World Championship match. And so, yeah, Jungle Boy, he won the match and will get an AEW World Championship match on whoever the champion was going to be. And so, yeah, so Jungle Boy was celebrating with Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt. They came out and they were celebrating together. And the crowd was singing along to their theme music, the Jungle Boy's theme music, Tarzan Boy. And, you know, and so Christian Cage, you know, him and Jungle Boy, they embraced each other. You know, Christian Cage, he was congratulating Jungle Boy, telling him to win the championship, go after Omega and take the title off of Omega. And so, yeah, so at first, man, when, when Christian Cage, when Christian Cage and Jungle Boy was left, dude, I was scared, man. I was absolutely nervous, man. I was nervous because at first I was like, man, they better not give that match to Christian because I had a feeling that Christian was going to win. Like, ever since he announced himself in this match, I, I had a feeling that he was going to win. And I was like, please do not be stupid. Please do not make a stupid move and have Christian Cage win this match. I, I was going for Jungle Boy. Every single person in that arena was going for Jungle Boy to win that match. And so I'm glad I'm glad they did the right thing and had, you know, Jungle Boy win the match. And so, yeah, so, yeah, Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy, he deserved it, man. Jungle Boy deserved the win. You know, he's not going to beat Kenny Omega, but he deserves a title match. And so, yeah, so he won. He won the match, and it will go up against Kenny Omega. And so, yeah, so, yeah, as as far as this match, dude, I cannot keep notes in this match. Could not keep notes in this match. It was absolutely impossible. Absolutely impossible. And Leo Rush, man, Leo Rush is all elite. Leo Rush is all elite. What he will do in AEW, send him after the TNT Championship. Have him go up against, you know, Miro, or any anybody, put him in the ring with anybody, man. So yeah, so Leo Rush is all elite, and yeah, man, that was it with that, man. And so yeah, so right after that we had a match, and it was Anthony Agogo with QT Marshall in his corner versus the American Dream for well, only one night only, the American Dream, Cody Rhodes. So yeah, with R. Anderson in his corner. And so, yeah, so Cody Rhodes, he actually came out to his old theme music. You know, no no version 2. You know, you know the the one that he was using for months now, the Snoop Dogg version of his theme song, I'm glad they got rid of it, you know, because it didn't fit him. So I'm glad they went back to his old theme music. And so, yeah, so, yeah, I, at that point I was like, thank God, man, because I did not like the Snoop, I did not like the Snoop Dogg version of his theme song. So, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm glad he got his old theme song back. And so, yeah, so, yeah, both of these guys, they were going back and forth. We had an uppercut to Ogogo, and we had a gut punch to Cody. And then 
Anthony Agogo, for the first time ever, he had an, another move. He had the angle slam. He had the angle slam to Cody, and then Cody kicked out. And we had a power slam to Agogo. And, yeah, so Agogo, his ribs was acting up in the match. And so we had a big boot to Cody. So Agogo, he was actually fighting back. And we had a Kato Mutilation submission move, Shades of Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Danielson, or whatever you want to call him. So, yeah, we had a German suplex to Cody, and we had an elbow drop to Cody. And then, you know, Ogogo, he had went for the eyes, so he raked Cody's eyes. And QT Marshall, he gave a, a cheap shot to Cody from outside the ring, behind the referee's back. And then Arn Anderson, he had chased after QT with a chair, and QT was running away. And then Ogogo, he had tripped up Cody Rhodes into the rope, and so he went throat first into that rope. And so, yeah, so Ogogo, he was bleeding. He was actually bleeding from his eye. I don't know how he was bleeding, uh, what what caused him to bleed, but he was bleeding from his right eye, which is his good eye. Now, I do believe that, you know, I think he is blind in his left eye. I think they brought it up on commentary that he's blind in his left eye. Anthony Ogogo is. So, yeah, so he was bleeding. He was bleeding from his right eye, the good eye. And so, yeah, so we had the Cody cutter to Ogogo. And then we had Ogogo. He had a beautiful frog splash to Cody Rhodes. And then Cody had kicked out. And we had a drop kick to Agogo. And then Cody, he went for the figure four leg lock. And then QT, he had pushed the rope towards Agogo so Agogo could reach the rope. And then, yeah. And so, yeah, so Agogo, he actually got out of the move. And we had a gut punch followed up by an uppercut. And then Agogo, he goes for the cover. But Cody's body was under the rope, so the rope, so, you know, so the count doesn't count. And so, yeah, so... Yeah, so they were arguing and all that stuff. The referee and Agogo were arguing and all that stuff. And so you had to end the match. You had Cody Rhodes. He had the vertebraker. You had a, he had a vertebraker to Agogo to win the match. So he actually won a match without his finishing move. And so yeah, so Cody Rhodes wins the match, and that was it with that. That was it with that. And you know, it was it was great. You know, great showing from Agogo. You know, I would have had Agogo win the match, but I know why Cody Rhodes won the match. Because, it, you know, it's about America and all that stuff. But, yeah, at first, at first, I did not care about the match. I did not care about the feud and all that stuff. I don't understand why this was a match on the show. You know, you know, a good match, decent match. You know, Anthony Agogo, he really impressed me in this match. I'm glad he tried something different. But overall, man, I did not, you know, I didn't care about the feud. But the match was good. The match was good. Anthony Agogo, he looked really good. But... I would I would have had I would have had a go go win the match, you know I would have had a go go win the match, but they did they didn't go that way. Now I understand why Cody won the match, but yeah, I really didn't care about the feud. Did not care about the feud. Now what's next for Anthony Agogo? Now that he lost to Cody Rhodes, I don't know. I don't know what's next, but yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. And so yeah, so right after that, we had the TNT Championship match, and it was. Yeah, it was Lance Archer versus Miro, the TNT champion. And so, yeah, so at the Fan Fest, you know, they, they showed a video of Miro. He had took out Jake the Snake Roberts. He had gave him a cheap shot. I think he had punched him right in his stomach. And so, yeah, so, yeah, so we had the match. So it was Lance Archer versus Miro, who is the TNT champion. And so, yeah, so when Miro was making his entrance, man, he was making his entrance. He was walking to the ring. You had Lance Archer. Archer he had dove onto Miro. From inside the ring into outside the ring, he almost fell right on top of his head. So that was a almost he almost killed himself. So yeah, so so yeah, he did ended up diving on Miro, but he undershot it. And so yeah, so so yeah, they were fighting, they were going back and forth. We had Archer, he started walking the top rope, you know, like the Undertaker would do. And so yeah, so he started walking the top rope, and he hit a moonsault on Miro. So that was very impressive to see a guy that size do something like that. And so, yeah, so we had Archer. He had put Miro through a table outside the ring. And, yeah, so, yeah, Miro, he had threw Archer into the crowd on a, on a fans. And we had a crossbody to Miro and a leg lariat to Archer. And Miro, he started kicking Archer over and over and over again. We had a spinning Uranagi to Miro, and Miro had kicked out. And, yeah, Archer, he went for a moonsault, and he missed it. And Miro had caught him with a Samoan drop, and then... Archer had kicked out, and yeah, Jake he had came out to the ring with his snake bag, and yeah, so so he tried to distract Miro and all that stuff, and so Miro had hit a machka kick to Archer, and then Miro he had grabbed the the snake bag from 
from Jake the Snake. He had threw it. He had threw it across the stage, and so the crowd started booing. The crowd started booing because they didn't like that. So yeah, so that's animal abuse. And so yeah, so yeah, so we had a choke slam to Miro, and he kicked out of the choke slam, and it, and then Archer had caught Miro with a pounce, and then yeah, so Miro had a machka kick to Archer, and then in the match we had a Miro had his you know he locked in his submission move the game over a submission move to Archer or the accolade or whatever you want to call it. To Archer, and so Archer had passed out. He passed out. So yeah, so Miro wins the match, and is still the TNT champion. And so yeah, this was an explosive match too. An explosive match. Miro man looked like a freaking beast. A beast. A dominant win for Miro man. I'm I'm shocked that they have Jake. Not Jake. I'm I'm shocked that they had Archer pass out instead of having him get screwed over by somebody. Or having Miro cheat to win the match, but they they made him pass out. You know he didn't he did not tap out. He passed out. So yeah, man, that's it. No more title shots for Archer. No more title shots. You cannot come back after that. You lost fair and square, dude. You lost fair and square. No more title shots for you. No more title shots for you. And so yeah, so yeah. Who's next, dude? Who is next? Who is gonna take that champion? Or who's gonna challenge Miro? Nobody's gonna take the title off of him. But who's going to challenge him for the title? Who's it going to be? I don't know. Maybe somebody from the inner circle. Maybe somebody from the inner circle. Or who Like who? Who else? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. That was it with that. You know, really, really good match. And so yeah. So right after that, we had a vignette. So All Out is coming back. So All Out is going to be in Chicago on Sunday, September 5th. So yeah, so All Out was going to be on Sunday in Chicago on September 5th. And yeah, man, and that's it. That's, so that's great news, man. So they finally getting back on the road. And so yeah, so well, yeah, they're going to be back on the road in July. But they are, you know, announcing their shows. So yeah, right after that, we had the Women's Championship match, the AEW Women's Championship match. And it was Dr. Britt Baker, D-M-D, with Rebel, not Reba in the corner. Versus Hikaru Shida, who is the AEW Women's Champion. And so, yeah, so both of these ladies, they were going back and forth with strikes. And so, yeah, so I, the crowd reaction in this match was good, too. You know, the crowd was split. You know, you had some people cheering for Shida, and you had the other half cheering for Britt Baker. And so, yeah, so we had Baker. She had caught Shida with a knee strike off of a distraction because Reba, she had distracted Cheetah, and we had a drop kick to Baker, and then Cheetah she threw Baker into the barricade outside the ring, and we had a diving crossbody to Baker and Rebel, and yeah we had a curb stomp to Cheetah, and so yeah Britt she had grabbed her, she had grabbed her surgical glove, she had a, a butterfly suplex to Cheetah, and a flatliner into the turnbuckle to Cheetah, and then Cheetah fought back with punches so she was laying it in on Dr. Britt. And we had a knee strike to Baker three times. And then, yeah, we had she, did, she had a knee strike to Baker right in the back of her head. And then, so, yeah, so both of these ladies, they were going back and forth again with strikes. And we had a fisherman's neck breaker to Sheeta, and she kicked out. And so, Sheeta, she went for a, a submission move, the stretch muffler. But Baker, she had grabbed the rope. And then, Baker, she had a sling blade to Sheeta. And then, we, she had a. a a air raid crash. She had an air raid crash to Sheeta and she kicked out. And yeah, so Dr. Britt, she had locked in the lockjaw to Sheeta. And then Sheeta, she had countered it. She had countered it and, and she tried to go for a move. But yeah, she also hit a German suplex to Baker. And she had a superplex on Baker and Baker had kicked out of the, the move. And yeah, so Sheeta, she had locked in the stretch muffler again to Baker. But Rebel, she had distracted Sheeta. And so yeah, so. So yeah, once Britt got control of the match, you had Reba, she accidentally, or Rebel, whatever you want to call her, she had accidentally hit Britt with the crutch. So she had the crutch in her hand, so she accidentally hit Britt in the head with the crutch, and so the crowd had booed. Because they thought it was going to, you know, they, they thought that Reba was going to screw Britt over by accident. And so yeah, so she went for the cover, and then Britt had kicked out. Well, she hit the Falcon Arrow first, and then she kicked out. And so, yeah, so Rebel, she tried to get involved again, but the referee had kicked her out. 
And then so Baker, she tries to go for the championship. She grabbed the championship and she tried to hit Sheeta with the championship, but Sheeta had stopped her. And so yeah, so yeah, so Baker she had laid the championship on the ground. Well the championship was already on the ground. And so yeah, she had a, a curb stomp. She had a curb stomp on Sheeta on the championship. And she went for the cover and she kicked out. And at that point I was like, What? I was like, What? How how in the world did she kick out of that? And so yeah, so both of these ladies they were reversing each other's moves. So, you know, their signature moves and all that stuff. And so yeah, so Sheeta she had the Toma Sheets of Baker and she kicked out. And then Baker, she had locked in the lockjaw to Sheeta to win the match, so Sheeta tapped out. So Dr. Britt Baker wins. Dr. Britt Baker DMD wins the match and is the new, the new, the new AEW Women's Champion. And so, yeah, this is a really great match. The crowd was invested in this match, you know. And Britt Baker, man, she wins the match and is the new AEW Women's Champion. And it was a long time coming, dude. And she deserved it. Absolutely deserved it. The first woman, the first woman signed to AEW, finally, finally gotten what she deserved, gotten what she, you know, she worked hard for it. She worked hard for everything. She finally is the AEW Women's Champion, and I'm so happy for her, man. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, Bay Bay, is the new AEW Women's Champion. And so, yeah, so you had Tony Schiavone. He was there. He left the commentary desk. He went to the ring or on the stage. He had hugged Dr. Britt. So, yeah, that was a feel-good moment, too, because Tony Schiavone and Britt Baker, they're friends. And so, yeah, man, that was it with that. So, as far as I'm concerned, who's going to beat Britt Baker for that championship? Nobody. Nobody is ready for Britt Baker. You want to talk about nobody ready for Asuka? Nobody is ready for Dr. Britt Baker, D-M-D. And so, yeah, man, that was it with that. That was it with the match. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had a tag team match, and it was Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Versus Sting and Darby Allen, and so yeah, so Sky and Paige made their entrance first, and so right after that we had a vignette, and it was Sting and Darby Allen. So you had Darby Allen riding on his skateboard, and so yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so it was Darby Allen and Sting. They were driving in like a muscle car, like an old school car, and they were driving to Daly's place. It looked like they were driving in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in a desert or something like that. And so, yeah, so they made their entrance. Darby Allen and Sting did. And so, yeah, so this is the first time that Sting had competed. That is the first time that Sting has competed in front of fans, dude, in a while. And so, yeah, so we had a Tope Suicida, the page from Darby Allen. So that's an explosive, explosive one, too, man. Darby Allen has the best Tope Suicida in the business, man, along with Santos Escobar, you know, and, and Samoa Joe. But yeah, Darby Allen's Darby Allen's Tope Suicida is freaking explosive, dude. It's like he shot he shot out like he shoots out like a cannon. And like he just he almost landed in the crowd. He almost landed into the crowd with that Tope Suicida. But he actually hit his like his back into the the guardrail or something like that. Oh yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix is another one that have a a, a good looking Tope Suicida. Yeah, I digress. But yeah, so we had Sky, he had Suplex Sting on the stage. And so, yeah, so Sting, he had rose back up after that. He had rose back up, and he went right after Scorpio Sky, and he threw him off of the poker chips that was on the stage. And so, yeah, so Sting, he had dove onto Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page off of the off of the poker chips. And so the, the crowd was chanting, you still got it? So, yeah, that was, that was a nice move from Sting. I did not expect it, Sting to dive off of some poker chips. But he dove off, off of the poker chips. And so, yeah, so the, the crowd was chanting, you still got it, and all that stuff. And so Paige, he had tripped up Darby Allen on a rope at one point. We had a, a springboard cutter to Darby from the sky. And then Paige, he threw Darby Allen to the turnbuckle, like really hard. And so we had a hot tag to Sting. And then Sting, he had took out Paige and Sky. But the referee did not see the tag. So the referee kicked Sting out, you know, put Sting into his corner. And yeah, so the crowd was booing and all that stuff. And so yeah, so Paige, you know. Yeah, this was a nice spot in this match. I love this spot. You had Paige. He had lifted up Darby Allen in the air. He was in a ring. And so he walked towards the other side of the ring and just threw him. He threw him outside of the ring into the crowd, dude. And that was that was a nice spot, dude. I love that spot. He crashed and burned into the fans that was in that crowd, man. Absolutely a great spot in this match. Absolutely great spot. 
And so, yeah, so Sting, he had helped Darby Allen back up on his feet. So he tried to help him up. And so, yeah, so the referee was counting to 10 and all that stuff. And so Sting was trying to decide whether he should bring him back into the ring or not. You know, he was concerned about, you know, Darby Allen's health health and all that stuff. And so Ethan Page, he was like, go ahead, Sting, bring him back into the ring so I can finish him. And so, yeah, so Darby, he had got back up on his own. He made it back into the ring at 9. And so, yeah, so we had a stunt dog millionaire to Page from Darby. And then we finally got the hot tag from Sting. He had stinger splashes on Page and Sky. And Sting, he had a cold red. So I did not expect this Sting to hit a cold red. He had a cold red on Page. So that was a nice spot. And so, yeah, we got another. We had another You Still Got It chant. Another You Still Got It chant from the crowd. And then Page, he had slammed Darby Allen on top of Sting. And so we had a Scorpion Deathlock. We had a Scorpion Deathlock to Page from from Sting. And then Darby Allen, he locked in the Fujiwara armbar to the Page. And so that's when Scorpio Scott had came in and locked in a heel hook on Darby Allen. So it was a chain lock of submission moves. And so yeah, so, so yeah, we had Darby Allen. We had Darby Allen and 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 Page. Paige and Darby Allen, they were scratching and clawing at each other, you know, trying to rip each other's eyes out and all that stuff and slapping each other in the face while they were locked in the submission move. So that was really nice, too. And so, yeah, so Sky and Sting, they were going back and forth with strikes. And, yeah, so we had a springboard cutter. We had a springboard cutter attempt from Sky to Sting. And so, yeah, we had the Scorpion Death Drop to Sting. No, the Scorpion Death Drop to Sky from Sting to win the match, so... Sting and Darby Allen wins the match, and that was it with that great match, man. Explosive match. You know, absolutely nice spots in this match. Nice spots in this match. And Darby Allen and Sting, man, what what, what are they going to do next, man? What are, exactly are they going to do next? I will send them after the tag team titles. I will send them after the tag team division. I will send, make them as a tag team and have them climb up the ranks because they are undefeated as a team. So I will send them after the tag team championships. Not Not – directly towards the tag team championship you know not directly to the bucks but build them up i guess have them beat other teams and then send them after the bucks that's what i would do you did it with eddie kingston and john moxley why not do it for sting and darby allen and so yeah so that was it with that and so right after that we had the aew world championship match which was my match of the night which was one of my one of my favorite matches of the night was this match right here the aew world championship match and so, yeah, so we had, so it was, it was a triple threat match. It was Pac, the Bastard Pac, versus Freshly Squeezed Orange Cassidy with the best friends in his corner versus Kenny, by God, Omega, who is the AEW World Champion, the TNA World Champion, and the Impact World Champion, and the Triple A Mega Heavyweight Champion with Don Callis, the Invisible Hand, in his corner. And so, yeah, we had a pump kick. We had a pump kick to, to Omega from Pac. And so, yeah, Pac and Omega, they had knocked each other out with cross bodies, so they were both knocked out. We had a Tope Suicida to Pac from Cassidy. We had a Swing of DDT to Omega from Cassidy. And we had an Acai Musalt to Omega from Pac, which was nice. And so, yeah, so it was outside the ring. Outside the ring. And so, yeah, we had a diving, a diving dropkick to Cassidy and Omega from Pac. And so Omega, he had his, his signature move that you can't escape to Orange Cassidy. And so yeah, right after that he had a, a big boot. We had a big boot to Pack into the turnbuckle from Omega. So yeah, he hit him with the big boot and he absolutely crashed and burned into that turnbuckle. And so we had a slide and drop kick to, to Cassidy and Pack from Omega. And so we had a Tope Con Hero to Cassidy and Pack from Omega. And we had a stunt dog millionaire. Stunt dog millionaire to Omega from Cassidy. And then Cassidy and Omega they were trading up you know they were trading roll ups. And then Pac, he had a 450 splash to both Cassidy and Omega. That was an awesome spot. Really awesome. And so, yeah, we had a Snapdragon suplexes. We had Snapdragon suplexes to Pac and Orange Cassidy. And we had a V-Trigger. Man, this was a V-Trigger city. We had V-Triggers at the V-Triggers at the V-Triggers. We had a V-Trigger to, to Cassidy. We had a V-Trigger to Pac. We had a super kick to Cassidy from Pac. And we had another V-Trigger to Cassidy. And we had an Avalanche German suplex to Omega. From Pack, and we had a senton bomb, a senton bomb to Pack from Cassidy while he had his hands in his pockets, so that was nice. And we had a Tiger Driver ninety eight to Cassidy from Omega, so that was a wicked one too, a nasty looking one. And so Cassidy had kicked out of the Tiger Driver ninety eight, 
And so we had knee strikes to Cassidy from Omega. And so Cassidy, he had put his hands in his pockets at one point, and he had fell down to the mat. And we had a V-trigger to Pack from Omega. And we had a Michinoku driver to Omega from Cassidy. And we had Pack, he had hit a brain buster, a beautiful brain buster to Cassidy to, pick, to kick out. And so we had a sunset flip powerbomb to Omega from Pack. We had an Avalanche Falcon Arrow, which was nice. I love that spot. An Avalanche Falcon Arrow to Omega from Pack, And then Cassidy, he had threw Pack out of the ring to try to steal the victory. And then so, yeah, so Cassidy, he went for the cover, and, and Omega had kicked out. So that was a close one. That was an absolutely close near fall. That would have been it. Crowd was chanting, that was three. That was three. That was almost it. Omega was this close from losing. And so, yeah, so Cassidy hit his most, dev his most devastating kick to to pack and then pack had kicked Cass cassidy right in his nuts kicked him right in his nuts square in the nuts and so which is a legal move which is a legal move in a normal match it would it would have been illegal and so yeah so pack he had the black arrow to cassidy and omega had stopped the pin so if omega wasn't there that would have been it and so yeah so pack he had tried to go for the black arrow again but he missed on omega so so cassidy he had an orange punch on one of these guys and then he had a beach break. He had a beach break to Omega. And he, Omega again kicked out again. So, man, this match right here, man, I'm telling you, man, I was at the edge of my seat on this match. So, yeah, so we had another orange punch to Pac and Kenny Omega. And then Callis, you know, Callis, Callis, he was getting nervous. He was getting nervous. He was, you know, swearing and all that stuff, cussing. And so, yeah, so Callis, he had left. He had left commentary. And so we had an orange punch. So Orange went for the orange punch to Pac. And he went for the cover, and then Don Callis, he had pulled the referee out of the ring. He pulled the referee out of the ring, and so they were arguing all that stuff. And, you know, the referee was like, you don't put your hands on me. You don't put your hands on me. I'm going to kick you out. And so the the crowd was chanting, F you, Don, F you, Don. I can't, I can't repeat what they said, but they said, F you, Don, F you, Don. And so, yeah, Packy had locked in the submission move, the brutalizer to Cassidy. And then Omega, he tried to stop the submission move he, by stepping on Pac, but Pac, he still had the hole locked in. And then, but Omega, he had took out the referee, so that was not, that was a funny spot, funny. So yeah, so Omega had took out the referee, so the referee couldn't call for the bell. And so yeah, Omega, he had used all his championships to hit Omega, I mean to hit Pac with the championship. So he hit Pac with the TNA championship, the Impact World Title. The Triple A Championship and the, and the AEW World Championship, and so so Orange Cassidy he had came out of nowhere and hit Omega with an orange punch, and then he went for the cover, and so another referee had came out. So Aubrey Edwards had came out. Aubrey Edwards had came out, and she went for the she went for the one two three, but Omega had kicked out. Omega had kicked out of that, and so Omega he had turned in, you know he had countered a move from Orange Cassidy. He had turned it into a crucifix, you know a crucifix cover or a crucifix bomb. To win the match, so Omega wins the match. So Kenny Omega wins the match and is still, still, still AEW World Champion. And so, yeah, this is a really great match. Really great match. I love the spots in this match, the moves in this match, dude. This this match right here had me on the edge of my seat. I was jumping out of my seat during this match, dude. Like, there were, there were points in this match that it made it feel like Omega was about to lose the championship. Like, there were points that I thought that Orange Cassidy was about to win. Like, he was this close. When I mean he was this close, he was this close from winning. He was this close. But he got screwed over by Omega and Callis. And so, yeah, so, yeah, that was it with that. And we all knew Omega was going to win. We all knew Omega was going to win. But it, in this match, they made it believe. They made you believe that Cassidy was going to win. Either Cassidy or Pac. But, yeah, that was it with that, man. Really great match. Probably the best match on the show. One of my, you know, my favorite matches on the show. And so, yeah, so right after that, man, we had an announcement for Full Gear. So, Full Gear is going to be on Saturday, November 6th in St. Louis, Missouri. So, we already had All Out. So, we're gonna, so they already announced All Out, and they announced Full Gear. So, yeah, so, so yeah, that's great. also great news, man. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had Tony Schiavone, or Tony Schiavone, or uh, Chris Jericho, we'll call him Tony Schiavone. So, yeah, so Tony Schiavone, he came out to the ring. He had an announcement to make, and he, he was talking about AEW's new show, Rampage. 
And so he said it's, it's going to be a special person, a part of Rampage. And so that person is going to be a coach. And he said the person is none other than the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. And so, dude, the crowd had popped. Like, like the crowd was going crazy. Like, Mark Henry, I was, I was shocked, dude. I was absolutely shocked that Mark Henry showed up tonight on AEW, uh, AEW Double or Nothing. Like, I, at first, I was like, Mark Henry? I was like, Mark Henry, what Mark Henry doing here? I thought he was a WWE lifer. I thought he was a lifer in WWE. I thought he was going to never go anywhere else. But here he is on AEW, double or nothing, dude. The pay-per-view, he was on He was on the pay-per-view, double or nothing. And I was shocked. I was shocked. I was I was expecting more of I thought I thought they were going to, you know, announce more of Analo. Like, here's that person is going to be a part of AEW Rampage. None other than Mauro Ronaldo. If it was Mauro Ronaldo, man, the crowd would have went absolutely ballistic. They would have went crazy. It would have been crazy. They would have chanted Mama Mia's and all that stuff. But we didn't get Mauro Ronaldo. Maybe they saving him. Maybe they saving him for later. Maybe they're gonna save him for later. But if I'm Tony Khan, man, I am getting Mauro Ronaldo, man. Please do not miss out on him. Do not miss out on Mauro Ronaldo, man. But yeah, so Mark Henry is gonna be there. He's gonna be on AEW Rampage. So yeah, so we don't know anything about the Rampage show yet. All we know is it's gonna be on Friday. And so, yeah, so, yeah, Mark Henry is in AEW. Mark Henry is all elite. And so, yeah, so right after that was the main event, dude. Was the main event, which was one, another favorite match on the show for me. And it was a stadium stampede match. It was the pinnacle. That's MJF, Wardlow, Sean Spears, FTR, as Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler with Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard was there, too. He was dressed as the guys. And so, yeah, so... Versus the inner circle. That's Chris Jericho, Le Champion, Sammy Guevara, the Spanish God, Jake Hager, Big Hurt, Jake Hager, and Proud and Powerful. That's Santana and Ortiz. And together they are the inner circle. And so, yeah, so, yeah, first off, we had the Pinnacle. Well, he, we had a limo came out first, and they was playing the, the Pinnacle theme music. And so MJF had came out of the limo. And so, yeah, so MJF, he was talking trash like he always does about Chris Jericho and the inner circle. And so, yeah, so the Inner Circle's theme music had played, or Chris Jericho's theme music played. And so you had the Inner Circle, they came out, you know, on a zip line. They was on a zip line, and so they were, you know, zip lining down from the, from the from a platform. And so, yeah, so they were zip lining, and so they made it to the ground. And so they started chasing after MJF, and so MJF, he had ran into the limo. So, yeah, so he had went inside the limo and locked himself in the limo. And so, yeah, so... In the inner circle, they thought that MJF was in. They thought that the Pinnacle were in the limo, but the rest of the Pinnacle there were not in the limo. So it was FTR. Yeah, FTR, Tully Blanchard, Sean Spears, and Wardlow. They had showed up in FTR's truck, that pickup truck that they debuted with. That that pickup truck, that black, old school pickup truck. And so they had came out with the truck and they ambushed the inner circle. And so yeah, so it was it was a brawl everywhere. It was a brawl. Like just like the casino battle royale, I could not take notes in this match. So yeah, we had Spears. They had a ring too. They had a ring in the stadium. So Spears, he had a he had a blue thunder bomb on Sammy, and so we had MJF and Jericho. They started going at it, and so yeah, so MJF, you know, they were at towards the limo. They were fighting towards the limo, and so MJF he had grabbed a fire extinguisher and started spraying Jericho with this fire extinguisher. He so right after he sprayed Jericho with this fire extinguisher, he had ran away. So he ran away, and so Jericho had followed follow right after him. And so, yeah, so Jericho, he, so, yeah, it was it was camera cuts. It was camera cuts and stuff like that. So we had different camera cuts. So they focused on Jericho and MJF, so they were fighting inside. And then Jericho, he had used a trash can. I think he had shoved his head in the trash can at one point. And so yeah, they were fighting like a, a like a, a cafe, like a lunchroom or something like that, or a break room. I don't know what it was. So, yeah, MJF, he had grabbed a cup of coffee and he had poured it in Jericho's face. And so, yeah, and then Jericho, he had grabbed a megaphone. Where did he get a megaphone from? I don't know. And so, yeah, he started yelling in the megaphone into MJF's face. And so, yeah, so Jericho hit MJF with the the wet floor sign. And so they were fighting this out of another room. He had, like, two coaches of the Jaguars or something like that. They threw Jericho football, so they threw Jericho's, they threw footballs to Jericho. And so Jericho, he threw the football at MJF one by one as they were throwing the, the footballs to Jericho. And so, yeah, so, and then Jericho, he had grabbed the laptop. Jericho had grabbed the laptop and he hit MJF with the laptop. 
and then Warlow. So we fo we had another camera cut, so they focused on Warlow and Hager. So right after Jericho and MJF was finished, he had Warlow and Jake Hager. They went at it. And so you had like a walk-in freezer. They had like a walk-in freezer, so they try to throw each other into the walk-in freezer. At first, Hager was in the walk-in freezer, and then Warlow tried to close the door, but Jake Hager had opened back up the door. And so they were fighting, and then they ended up going inside the walk-in freezer. And then Warlow, he had grabbed like an icicle, and he tried to stab Hager with the icicle. And so Hager, he had took out Warlow. He had slammed him onto something. And so, yeah, they were fighting again. And then Warlow, he had speared Jake Hager through a wall, you know, because Jake was flipping him off. Hager was flipping him off and everything, and so he speared him into a wall. And then we had the the camera. We had a camera focused on Sammy and Spears. And so, yeah, so Sammy Guevara, he was looking for Sean Spears. And then the lights had cut off, and then the lights had cut back on. And it was like a little spotlight on Spears. He was sitting in a chair. He was surrounded by chairs, and so he was sitting in one of the chairs. And so Spears and Guevara, they were going at it, you know, chair fighting. And then Sammy, he was using his athleticism against Spears, his speed and his athleticism against Spears. And then Spears, he tried to use bulk, bulk cutters at one point, and he changed his mind and decided to use the chair. And he started showing off and all that stuff. And so Spears, you know, Sammy, he had a knee strike to Spears. And so, yeah, they were fighting inside some room. And so Sammy, he started choking out Spears with the cords and all that stuff. And, yeah, so Sammy, you know, yeah, Sammy, he, you know, he was fighting, he was beating up Spears, and he started looking up. And when he started looking up, I was like, Sammy, what are you about to do now? What are you about to do now, Sammy? And so, yeah, so Sammy, he climbed up a platform. He was about to dive onto Spears, but Spears had moved out of the way. And so, yeah, so Spears, he had threw a ladder. He had threw a ladder right in Sammy Guevara's face. And then Spears, he had handcuffed. He had handcuffed Sammy Guevara to something. He had handcuffed him to something. And so right after that, you had Sean Spears. He had walked away and all that stuff. And then we had the video, we had the camera cut to Proud and Powerful, and FTR and Tully Blanchard, they were at a club, they were drinking and all that stuff, and you had other people there too, and you had the FTR guys, you had Proud and Powerful, they had took out the other guys that were there, you know, the the spectators that were there who were just enjoying a drink, and so yeah, so FTR, yeah, FTR and Santana and Ortiz are Proud and Powerful, they were drinking, and so... Yeah, you had a camera cut. You had a camera cut to Conan. So Conan was the, the DJ. So the crowd had popped for Conan. And so, yeah, so we had music playing in the background. So you had a bar fight. The bar fight had broke out. It was with FTR and Proud and Powerful. And so, yeah, they were fighting. They were going back and forth. They were throwing chairs at each other. They were throwing each other through tables and all that stuff, using trash cans and all that stuff. And then Tully, he tried to get involved. Tully Blanchard tried to get involved. He had like a... a I don't know what he had in his hand. He had something in his hand. And then Conan, like, so he was about to hit Santana with it. He was about to hit Santana with the with the item that he had in his hand. But Conan had stopped Tully Blanchard from getting involved. And so Santana, he had took the weapon that Tully had in his hand. He took it away from him and just stabbed Tully Blanchard with that, with that weapon that he had. So he stabbed him with something, the same thing that, you know, the same thing that he did to MJF. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, so one of these guys, they had took off their belts or something like that, and they started hitting the other guy with the belt. And we had trash cans. Like I said before, they had trash cans involved. And then Wheeler, Cash Wheeler, he had started throwing beer bottles at Ortiz. Like, he, he threw it right at him. And so, yeah, so Santana and, and Wheeler, they were fighting in the elevator. And so right after that, we went right back to Warlow and Jake Hager. And so Warlow, he tried to use a pallet. He tried to use a pallet on Jake Hager. But Hager had moved out of the way. And so we had a Uranaki to Warlow on a wooden structure. And then we, right after that, we went back to Jericho and MJF. And then Jericho and MJF, they were fighting in the hallway. And then Jericho, he had used Tony Khan's dad. You know, they had a picture or a structure of him. Or a picture structure of, 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 of Tony Khan's dad, Shad Khan. I think that's his name. And so, yeah, he used the picture of Shad Khan to hit MJF with it. So Jericho used the picture of Shad Khan to hit um MJF with. And so yeah, so MJF he was talking and he went right after Jericho's injured arm. And so yeah, so Jericho he grabbed a stapler. He grabbed a stapler and he started stapling stuff to MJF. He stapled a sign to his head and then he ripped the sign off of the stapler. He ripped the signs off the of his head. 
So that that had to hurt. He ripped it off. And so yeah, so they were, it looked like they were fighting in like a boardroom. They were fighting in a boardroom where the I guess the higher ups go to make their their business decision. And so yeah, so MJF he had power driver. He had power driven Chris Jericho on a boardroom table. And so yeah, so MJF he had brought out a, a hammer. He had got a hammer. And so yeah, so MJF he tried to use the hammer on Jericho, but Jericho he had hit MJF with a trash can, like a small trash can. And so yeah, so Jericho he started grabbing for stuff, and so he grabbed his bat, Floyd the bat. He grabbed Floyd the bat, and he hit MJF for Floyd the bat. And so Jericho he had threw MJF. He had smashed his, he had smashed MJF's face into the a window, or a glass, a glass door or something like that. And so MJF he was bleeding, he was bleeding all over his face. And so right after that, he had spears. It showed the the camera back to st the spears. So Spears, he was by himself, you know, trying to group, you know, regroup with his other guys. And so you had the inner circle. You had the inner circle motorcycle club, the motorcycle club that escorted the inner circle. They had chased after Spears on their motorcycles. And so, yeah, right after that, they cut back to Jericho and MJF. They were fighting in Daly's place. They was fighting towards Daly's place. And so, yeah, so MJF, he had slammed Jericho's arm. And then MJF, he tried to throw Jericho off of the balcony at one point. So that was that was crazy, and so yeah, so yeah, so Jericho he had power bomb, he had power bomb MJF through a structure, and we cut back to Sean Spears, and yeah, yeah, Sammy Guevara, he had Sam, Sammy Guevara, he was driving a golf cart, so he was chasing after Sean Spears on a golf cart, and so yeah, so this is shades, it was shades from last year because Sammy Guevara was the one that was running away, I think it was from Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega, they were in a golf cart last year, and they chased after Guevara, so Guevara he returned a favorite. But this time to Sean Spears. And so, yeah, so we had Sammy Guevara. He tried to go for a springboard move. But Spears had caught him in midair with a chair shot. And, you know, Spears had went for the cover. And Sammy kicked out. And we had another chair shot. We had another chair shot to Sammy right in his head from Spears. And then Sammy had kicked out. And it's Sammy Guevara had his finishing move, the GTH. I think he called it the go to hell. So he had to go to hell to Spears. And then Sammy, he had curb stomp. He had curb stomp Spears into a chair. The same thing that Spears had did to him. You know, when the Pinnacle made their debut. Spears had curb stomp Sammy's face into the to the chair. So, you know, Sammy Guevara, he had brought return a favor. He had returned a favor to Spears. And so to end the match, we had Sammy Guevara. He had the 630. The 630 sent time bomb to Spears to win the match so inner circle wins the match and are still together they are still together and this is this is a great main event this is a great main event this is a very fun match very fun match dude and yeah man like just like with the casino battle royale i could not take notes in this match i could not take notes in this match it was impossible man really impossible but i jot down as many as i could and i i love everything about this match everything about this match the you know the the scenes the fighting scenes and all that stuff and yeah and it was a feel good moment it was a feel good moment for the inner circle feel good moment that they're together they're still together and they're not gonna break up and also for Sammy it's also a feel good moment for Sammy because Sammy Guevara he actually he's the reason why the inner circle is still together he's the reason why the inner circle is still together he picked up the win and yeah and and just like with the blood and guts just like with the blood and guts it was Sammy Guevara that cost well, not cost the inner circle to win, but he surrendered the team. He surrendered the inner circle. He surrendered for his team. And now to see him pick up the win for the inner circle, and the inner circle is together because of him, and that was a feel-good moment for Sammy, dude. A feel-good moment for Sammy. And yeah, man, and absolutely, the crowd made this match, dude. The crowd absolutely made this match. The crowd was invested in this match. Absolutely invested in this match. You know? Crowd was pro in a circle. They were pro in a circle. They did not cheer for the pinnacle. They were pro in a circle, man. Crowd was, you know, singing along to Judas. And yeah, man, that was it, man. That was it with the show. The firecrackers, firecrackers that went out, or the pyro had went out, and all that stuff. The inner circle was celebrating, hugging each other, you know, flipping the middle finger. Yeah, man, that, that was cool, man. Really cool. Really great main event. Fun main event. And yeah, man. And that was that was double or nothing, man. Overall, really great show, man. We had a lot of great matches on this show. 
the AEW World Championship match was really good. This match was good. That tag team title match was good too, man. We just had a lot of great matches on this show, man. A lot of great matches on this show, and it turned out to be a great show, man. And the fans, the fans made the match, you know, the fan, yeah, the, the fans made the matches better, but the fans actually made this show better, man. Made this show better, man. By them just being there and them reacting to, to everything, man. It, it, it was just, it was just a fre a breath of fresh air, man. Just, to just have the fans back, and it's great to have the fans back once again, man. And so yeah, man. And that was it, man. That was it with the double or nothing, man. The double or nothing, double or nothing review on the Ryan Awesome Show. And yeah, man. If you haven't done this already, or if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, man. What are you waiting for? Hit the thumbs up if you. If you're new here, man, subscribe to the channel. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you hit that bell. You click that bell so you'll be the first ones to know my next video will come out. And yeah, man, because I'm here each and every single week. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And yeah, man. And I'll see you guys on Monday, man. I forgot to do my pro wrestling crate, so I'm going to have that out on Monday. So I'll do my pro wrestling crate on Monday. And yeah, man, and if you missed my AEW Dynamite review, my my go home episode or the final stop before AEW before double or nothing, the video is going to be right up here in this corner. And a link to that video will be down below in the description. So make sure you click that. Either click this or click the link down below in the description if you missed it. And yeah, man. And yeah, this is this is double or nothing, man. This is double or nothing. The one thing I can say about this, you know, one negative I can say about this is the show is too long. It's way too long. The the show needs to end at nine o'clock, either nine thirty or ten o'clock. But this this show ended at eleven o'clock, around eleven o'clock for me. But yeah, that was it with the show, man. And once again, guys, man, thank you for the support, man. Thank you for the support, all the love and the support that you guys give me on this show. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, man. Comment down below. Tell me how you felt about this episode or this pay per view, rather, of Double or Nothing. And share this video, man. Share this video with each and every single person that you come across on a day to day basis. And yeah, man, I'll see you guys on Monday for my Pro Wrestling Crate. And yeah, man. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday, too. I'll see you guys for Tuesday for NXT. Monday first for Pro Wrestling Crate. And then Tuesday for NXT. And yeah, man. And this has been. The Ryan Awesome Show. Take care, stay safe, and that's that.